and played the telephone game. Instead of checking facts, you ended up spreading the rumor that was started by a rat. Played the telephone game. Instead of checking facts, you ended up spreading the rumor that was started by a rat. Bitch, I live on the stretch before I give your ass a soup. Other than that, handle your business, do what you gotta do. I ain't hide from you hoes, I survive worse than you. Salinas Valley 99, dirty weather telling the truth. Okay, he pulled a knife on me and I hit him in the chin. Lately, the one and only on the Ray Brown, better known as X-Rated, has been making news. So I want to share this story with you about X-Rated. In 1999, well actually 1998, I hit Salinas Valley. And I was on B-Yard. X-Rated was on A-Yard. And we used to hear things. Things of positivity. Things that people couldn't imagine being done, being done inside the walls. Haters come in all forms of fashion. This is the story. So the only radio stations that we can get clearly was was that one that was like 92.3. Or, or not maybe not 92.3, but like 92 something or 93 something. Something like that. Early 90s. But anyhow, so we looking forward to this. Then you had X rated. I would let's get it straight. I was on AR. X rated. I mean, I was on BR. X rated was on AR. And this is not like what you would think. But I got to keep it 100. Like, X rated, when he would call, he would call up to the radio station, right? He would call up to the radio station. And they would play a freestyle beat. And X rated would be on the phone in the day room. Because this is like before cell phones in prison. This is before that shit. He'd be on the cell phone. I mean, I mean, I mean, excuse me. He'd be on the phone in the day room and they'll have one of the homies, one of his homies play the music. Like he had his, his door open with the radio station. And then, and then, uh, 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 uh Muhammad would throw on a beat. He throw on a beat and X rated to get to busting. I ain't going to lie. So just think like he wasn't, he was all freestyle and he would go like, Hey, we was tuning in on all the yards, all the yards, the whole Central Coast. I ain't going to lie. I'm going to keep it 100. The whole Central Coast that listened to that radio station, which was everybody because there was no black stations whatsoever in the Central Coast. None. So when he would bust, he got, he busting for everybody. Like he, like everybody's listening. It's majority Mexicans that's hearing X-rated bus, but he was busting. I can't take that from him, but there's a such thing as as a, as a green light. It's a such thing as a green light, and and whatever the homies, I, I wasn't there. Like I didn't, I wasn't part of that round. T- I wasn't there. I'm just saying I was a kid, but I know politics. So there was a green light, and 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 it basically carried through a lot a long time of his time. So that green light, what happened is I'm. Let me go back. Let me go back. I'm. Let me go back. I'm gonna just get to it, man, because I don't even want to be talking about this shit like that. But anyhow, man, I'm gonna just keep it a hundred. So, so Muhammad, Muhammad and X rated. They could. They you know because Muhammad on the radio, he talking about how he's producing X rated X rated's album, The Unforgiven. Volume one. He's talking about it. Like X-rated didn't already drop like two, like one and a half albums while he was already locked up in the county jail. So now he about to drop a real album. This shit ain't been done. Like this is some shit that ain't been done in prison. Like this dude is giving us rappers hope. I went to prison behind rapping. So all of a sudden X-rated is about to release an album from prison, like an album that sounds good because the other stuff was sounding like it was sounding like it was created. And it sounded like somebody was in an ice cream truck uh, driving by playing x ray That's what it sounded like, to be honest. But it was still slapping. But this is a produced album. And he got somebody on the outside that's fucking with him to produce his shit. What? Man, they dropped the first X-rated single. Uh, what, what song was that? 1974. The president was Nixon. They cut the umbilical cord and did the circumcision. I was eight pounds, eight ounces of bouncing baby boy. America's nightmare. A mother's pride and joy. What? That shit, nigga. Motherfucker couldn't say nothing about that. 
that shit was slapping. That shit was slapping. And I was like, shit, it is what it is. But I was on BR. BR. So when the Unforgiven album come out, the Unforgiven album comes out. The first thing that happened is they showed his family, the family of the victim that in his case, they showed it on TV. Like they showed it. Like they showed like the family crying. They like, we don't feel X-rated should make money off of his crime. Like he can't make, he's like in prison for killing somebody's mother. He's in prison for killing somebody's mother. Everybody in America know he didn't do it, though. Like, he didn't do it. He just was there. He was part of the ensemble, but he didn't do that. And I ain't even watched none of his interviews. But, you know, shit, he didn't do that. But he was there. And he caught the repercussions. That's why they were saying there was a green light on him. That And this is not something I heard. These is politics from when I know, when because I first hit the system in the 90s. These is politics. I can look X-rated in his face and tell him, that you know, shit, you know what it was. You know what it was. You know, we older now. That is like 20 years ago. We're older now, but at the same time, that's what it was. Because it might have been, it might have been like, it might have been like self gain somewhere in there, I believe. But somebody lost a mama, and that, and that neighborhood loved that woman, Miss Patricia Harris. That neighborhood loved that woman. I'm talking about Patricia Harris touched souls. Like Patricia Harris was like my grandma, and when she met her in that, there was actually uh, there was actually bloodshed afterwards because of that. So it was and it was on between two neighborhoods, and it wasn't cool for a while, man. It wasn't cool. Now you know time for it and all that. That's a whole different, this is an old new era. But back then, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't cool. So, so here's where it go down. First off, all of a sudden, Muhammad comes on the radio. Oh, yeah. And, and Muhammad had a wife, a wife named like Hanifa or something like that. And she used to sing and rap too. She was pretty talented. I think she had a song with X-Rated, if I'm not mistaken. But the thing is, how are they doing this? That's the question. How are they doing this? But right now they got a song with Hanifa and X rated. And then they and and this shit is quality. He's in prison. How is this happening? So the family come on the news. They're like, we they're really having like visuals about like he didn't drop the album from prison. It's like a mockery, right? It's like a mockery to the family of the people that he killed. He making money off of the off of the stuff. So next thing you know. The L.A. blood comes out to the homies. He like, y'all just going, y'all just going to let, and this is, and I'm telling you, I ended up going to A-Yard not too long after this happened. My celly was one of the people in this shit in particular. So this is not secondhand. This is firsthand. So if you got any questions, like he wasn't on the yard. No, you might as well say I was on the yard because this was firsthand. Even he got to, even he going to have to agree with the stuff that I'm saying. So what happened is the homie DJB is from the hood of the of the mother that was that man, that was killed, and the L.A. blood came out. The bloods came out like and it got at the homies like, blood. This nigga killed your homie mom, and this nigga's on the yard with y'all, like rapping in the state, rapping to the radio. He got man, he making money. You see that? You see his family on TV last night because we seen the news where they was going crazy about him dropping that out al- about dropping dropping the album. They was going crazy, so that so they was like blood. Y'all just gonna y'all just gonna let that happen? Like y'all just gonna let X Rated just be on the yard after he ain't it the green light on this nigga or something? I swear. And this is from somebody that was in the meeting. This ain't no. This ain't no but her. No, this is by first hand. Hey, blood, y'all just gonna let this nigga stay here? So, here was what happened. The plan was, first of all, 
X rated is a, is a crib. First of all, X rated is a crib. So he got other people that's going to rock with him. So that is the NC car. That is the Northern crib car, which consists of like Stockton, Fresh, some people from Fresno, any Northern crib in the Northern California that rock NC, they going to have, they got to have, they got to have X rated back. So the play was this because X rated is from Sacramento and his little crib crew. And then Sacramento is supposed to get on uh, on X rated, right? Because you know, truth of the matter is it's a green light. That shit shouldn't go down. It should he shouldn't have been there. Especially doing that. He was doing the most. So next to you know, the green the first of all, you got LA Crips off top. LA Crips. If you not about to jump on no crib without really having like the clearance of the LA crib car, especially if they numbers is hella hella great. You go in some some form or fashion, you're gonna have to get some type of clearance to jump on some crips and them not get involved because of what it is. So they understood the the play that was about to happen. The Sacramento Crips. I mean, the Sacramento Bloods is about to get on the Sacramento Crips and the Stockton Crips. So what happened is they could and the in the LA Crips and the LA Crips gave okay, all right, it's good. But what happened is when Sacramento took off on on the Stocktons and all that, and it was knife play involved too, because it was homies that got stuck the fuck up. So what happened is is. L.A. Bloods got involved. Like, L.A. Bloods got involved. Like, it was supposed to be, like, L.A. Cribs gave a clearance if, as long as it was only Sacramento against the X-Rated and his little and his partners, the Stockton car mainly. So, the L.A. Bloods wasn't supposed to get involved, but they did. They did, and that wasn't part of the agreement. So, what happened is, after we came off of lockdown, well, excuse me, like I said, I wasn't there, but I know the story first, first, first hand. First, first, first hand. Now, pause. We're going to go back. Let me fill in some blanks. Hanif, I mean, Muhammad, the dude at the radio station out of nowhere was like, I got to go. Like, I got to go. I don't know what's going on, but I got to go. I'm out of here. This is my last broadcast, y'all. I'm out of here. And he played one song that I will never forget, the last song that he played. And it was that song by Big Punisher, Punish Me. And I got that song on my channel, too, Big Pun, Punish Me. And that song right there, that I'll never forget it. But anyhow, X-Rated, after that, them right, that's when the riots happened. So anyhow, when the sack hom when the sack homies took off on them, they went back. They they had a riot. I don't know how long it lasted. I know I know like two two of my homies got blasted. And I don't know how many of them got blasted, but it was a good one, right? So what happens is, like a little month go by or whatever. All of a sudden, they ready to let everybody off a of lockdown. Now I'm about to switch to the version from a homie that was involved in this part. So the homie said, "Man, look." The L.A. Crips is tripping on us because we took up because the L.A. Bloods got involved. So, like, we better be on our toes, right? Man, look, they tipped everybody off, but it just wasn't enough. It just wasn't enough. They said this from the homie, this from the homie, uh, 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 the most scandalous homie from Sacramento, the most scandalous homie from Sacramento, uh, uh, fucking Bam, is it Bam? Not Bam. Uh, fuck, bap, t bap, bap, man, look, bap say, he looked up, he said the Crips was all talking and shit, he said, next to you know, hella Crips just started running at everybody, just all the homies, all the LA bloods, and they, they said it was just, they was screaming, ah, like running at them, man, they stuck the homies, they did the homies bad. I ain't gonna lie, I did the homies bad. But it was some it was some faggot shit going on. It was some homies that was hiding up under tables and shit like that. I heard about y'all. But it was some homies that was hiding up under tables and shit. But it was some faggot shit. I ain't gonna lie. 
But it was the num the numbers, nigga. The, the L.A. Chris was so thick. I'm talking about. They said it was like it was like a wall. Like my celly was hacksaw from uh, my celly was hacksaw from Elm Street from Bompton. He was telling me he was like blood. It was so many crips. Like he said, I didn't know what the fuck to do. He said, I just put my back against the wall. The hacksaw went hard too. I ain't gonna lie. He but and hacksaw's the one that told me it was some bitch ass niggas that was hiding up under the table and shit. Because them crips was coming and they meant business too. They was all bangered up. So I hit that yard after that. Look, I hit the yard after that. That's why a lot of the crips respected me because when I came. Like it was fresh off of that ride. Like and they would they was hunting Sacramento niggas like they was on the menu. But I came, they respected my gangster because I just came from attempted murder from the other yard. So they was they already knew like that nigga's with it. So like fuck don't like leave that nigga alone. He a cool he any cool. That shit that my my y'all wonder why I'm humble? That's that shit shit, being humble goes a long way. Goes a long way. So anyhow, man, so anyhow. After after that riot happened, I know I was on B yard, right? They brought X rated to B yard. When they brought X rated to B yard, they had put him in five building. And X rated could tell you. Because I he'd tell you when he hear me say this, he'd know I know my shit. So when they brought him on the yard, man, they had him, they had man, they had X rated <clears throat> surrounded like the motherfucking president. It was so many police surrounding him, walking him into five buildings, and then they kept him in there. They kept him in there every time he moved out that building. Like he had a, a presidential escort wherever he went. He was celebrity status. I ain't gonna lie. X Ray was celebrity status up in that bitch. Even more than even more so than Monster Cody. But he was a celebrity in that bitch. That's what happens when you one of the first ones that do shit. So when he dropped the unforgiving, he gave a lot of people hope. He gave a lot of people hope, such as myself. Because when I was on B yard, I we was on I was on B yard and I was they I was in the hobby shop and I was selected to be in like a rap group and I used to really like rap on the yard. Like we used to rap on the yard, the whole yard come. We had our little group, little four man group, and we used to be busting until I caught the attempted murder during the concert. But before then, it was like it was open. I was inspired, and the X rated used to come on the on the. He used to come on the radio like at least every other day, and he was freestyling, gassing. There was nobody I knew that could gas. He's he was sounding like T Nutty. He was sounding like T Nutty off the freestyle though. Can't nobody off the freestyle. I can't even take no like he was do he was doing that, not even messing up. He'd be like, let he tell the homie, open the door, open the door, play the beat. Like like I mean, open the door, turn the radio up, and be on the on the on the phone in the day room, busting, busting. And I ain't never I ain't seen no X rated videos or I ain't seen none of his interviews recently or nothing. So you know I'm talking facts. So here's another after the thing fact. I ended up in possession of the radio that X-Rated used to record. The X-Rated used to record. I bought it from Yogi. Now, Yogi was a crip. He, I don't know where Yogi was from, but this this was he recorded that shit with a two-way radio. Man, look, it was a boombox radio with a tape deck on each side. And all you had to do is hold the is record. And either X knew the beat or he had a tape of instrumentals, which I'm 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 a hundred percent positive he had a tape of instrumentals. Don't ask me how, but I know he had a tape of instrumental. Now and them instrumentals, all you gotta do is know the beat count, and then all you do is hit record and you bust into that thing. Now how the tape cassette got out, you know, that's none of my business. How the tape cassette got out, that's none of my business. But I know how, but that's none of my business though. But I know that he motivated me. I ain't gonna lie. He motivated me. Shit, I wanted to rap even harder when I heard it. When I heard him doing that shit, like this nigga's in the pen on the radio. Who does that? This is before cell phones. This is before cell phones. And can't nobody else give you this story. Can't nobody else give you this story because it's all facts. So just think, let's run it back. X-rated, he busting on the radio. He got the whole Central Coast vibing off his freestyle flow and all that. He got Muhammad working with him. They about to drop the Unforgiving one. Then bam, we getting a riot. I mean, they getting a riot. Dot dog. 
Dot Dog, who was on the album. You got a price on your head, but all the niggas want to see you dead. This is a 50G contract. I don't know what you did, but they want to kill you, your wife, and your kids on Mortal Kombat. That Dot Dog that was on that, he was sellies with x rated He the one that told me. That's how I know. Because Dot Dog and me, Dot Dog is from Stockton. That dog is from Stockton. That dog, he ended up getting stabbed on BR. Like he was in a riot over there with the homies, and he ended up coming to like coming to uh, 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 BR. He got stabbed on. I mean, he was on AR, came to BR, and you know, shit. He had respect over there. That shit happened over there. But on BR, it wasn't going down like that. But that dog ended up getting stabbed anyway by somebody in the kitchen. That shit was crazy. He didn't go. I mean, it, it wasn't too, too bad. But he did. But word was, that dog did get bust on in that kitchen, though. But that dog was, that dog, I fuck with that dog. That dog from Stockton. Shout out Stockton. But anyhow, man. So, y'all thought I was going to talk about him in a negative light. But I ain't. But I just I couldn't bring myself to do that. Y'all wonder why I took so long to tell this story because I had to. First of all, I was talking about X rated before he even got out, like before he even got out. But then he got out, so it's like shit. You gotta let a man tell his story. I ain't here. I ain't. I ain't here to critic to victimize nobody no more. That shit happened. That shit happened. Dumbass long ago. Dumbass long ago. So who am I? Who am I, man? As far as y'all want to know, was X rated S N Y? Was he PC? I mean, shit. If I'm, I imagine him being the person that he is. He'll probably tell you, yeah, I was PC. Yeah, I was S N Y. He'll tell you, and that, and I believe, and this is just my personal opinion. I believe that that because every time he hit the main line, homies was trying to get at him. I think that he had like the like the uh, committee said he had no choice. Like they committee said he had they they have no choice but to make you S and Y because like and like every time we try to let you out, people are attacking you, and we're getting we're getting kites. See, the thing about kites in prison is kites have power, and them uh, and them bitches. I'm pretty sure they was flying about X rated because they people didn't want to get into it. People didn't want to uh, uh, lose their visits or their shit, so they they drop kites, bitch shit. But they drop kites and shit. So I I don't know why X rated was S and Y, but yes, he was S and Y. But I don't know why, so I can't sit here and put that on this man. I just believe that they might have forced him in that situation. That's kind of what I heard. As far as him getting thrown over the tier by the North Daniels, that's their business. I don't know nothing about that. I mean, I do, but I don't know nothing about that. I don't know why it happened or nothing like that. Shit. But other than that, man, shit, the Unforgiving One was slapping. That shit was slapping. Then he had the other song, You Better Bring Your Knife to the Yard. You better bring your knife to the yard. That shit we used to be slapping the nefarious. Yeah, all that shit. But that and then then they had a song. They had a he was on a uh he was on a uh a, uh a, a compilation. A compilation that that was slapping too. So anyway, he gave us hope, man. He gave us hope that rappers in prison can can uh, uh produce and come up with music and get it out to the world. He gave us hope, man. So shout out to everybody that was involved in that situation. Rest in peace, Miss Patricia Harris. And uh, and uh, other than that, man, Dirty Brother, go.